Brought to you by... Yes, dear. Oh, I've already told you I can't get home tonight. Business is business, Lammy Five. <laughs> no, I can't possibly postpone that appointment. I got them. Here are your tickets for the ball game tonight. <laughs> tickets? Who said anything about a ball game? Why, that's the most insulting thing that anyone has ever called me. Oh, is that Mrs. Mooney? Tell her I said hello. <laughs> All right, all right. If you can't believe your own husband, I have no alternative but to hang up on you, Emma. 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 <laughs> hey, you, you. Me? What would I do? You have just turned my home into a split-level penitentiary. Honey, <laughs> your wife will forgive you. After all, this isn't the first time she caught you lying. If you want my advice... Mrs. Carmichael, my life with Irma is none of your wretched business. It's my wretched business. <laughs> I'll handle Irma. I was just going to say it would be easier to apologize if you say it with flowers. What I have to say to Irma can't be said with flowers. <laughs> A flower pot, maybe. <laughs> but not flowers. Remember last time, if it's not flowers today, it'll be a fur coat tomorrow. You know, we haven't had any fresh flowers in our living room for a long time. Any special kind you'd like for her? Yes, poison ivy! <laughs> Mrs. Mooney's flowers. Yes. Do you like them? Oh, they're beautiful. Eddie, you really are an artist. You know something? These are pretty enough to be artificial. Oh, thank you. I guess you love flowers as much as I do. Yeah, yeah, that's because I used to live over a funeral parlor. I got started by growing plants on my windowsill. Oh, really? Yeah. But there's always some kid on the block I had to fight. There was always some guy calling me a sissy. Yeah, well, I'll bet those bullies would be good and jealous if they could see the beautiful work you do now. Ah, uh, no, I'm just a glorified delivery boy. Well, you won't be after you buy the shop from your boss. Oh, that's all off. I can't get the $3,000 for the down payment. Oh, Eddie. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I'll just have to tell Mr. Finley to sell the place to somebody else. He can't sell it to anybody else. Tell him how much it means to you. Mr. Finley wants cash. Where's a pug like me gonna raise 3,000 bucks? Mr. Mooney. What do you want? Oh. <laughs> oh, Mr. Mooney. Eddie Riffles. Oh, 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 you don't have to defend me, Mr. Mooney. He's a friend. Mrs. Carmichael, I am well aware of who Eddie Rickles is. I saw you knock out Joey Mitchell at Madison Square Garden in 1962. You remember that fifth round? Oh, boy, he thought he had you trapped, but you backpedaled. Then you fainted with your left, and you surprised him with that uppercut. Pow! You never had a more loyal fan than Theodore J. Mooney. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mooney. Ted, to you. <laughs> Why, Eddie, I didn't know you were a famous prize fighter. Ah, uh, that was a long time ago. Ah, uh, you were my kind of boxer, Eddie. And you're his kind of banker, Ted. <laughs> Ted to him. Mr. Mooney to you. Let's tell him the good news, Eddie. Uh, Eddie's going into business for himself. Well, congratulations, buddy boy. Uh, where's the saloon going to be? <laughs> Who said anything about a saloon? Mrs. Carmichael, anyone familiar with sports knows that baseball players open bowling alleys and boxers open saloons. Yeah, well, not any. Oh? Uh, I'm a florist. <laughs> ah, you're wise. And he's going to buy his own shop. And you're smart. And you're going to give him the $3,000 to do it. And you're nuts. <laughs> Mr. Mooney.
Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Carmichael, the bank can't lend money to just any stranger who wanders in off the street. Stranger? You, you just said he's your old buddy, remember? And all he needs is $3,000. Don't be a cheapskate. Mrs. Carmichael, I am acting in the best interest of the bank. So don't call me a cheapskate. Well, you said you were Eddie's most loyal fan. Why don't you loan him the money? Now you can call me a cheapskate. <laughs> Oh, don't feel bad, Eddie. Mr. Mooney will only loan money to people who don't need the loan. <laughs> That's all right. I guess I was too crazy to even think I could own my own shop. Oh, now, Eddie, don't give up. Nothing is impossible. Three thousand bucks? That's impossible. Uh, Boy, just think of it. When I used to fight, I used to get that much for one bout. You got three thousand dollars for one fight? Wow! Eddie, do you really want that florist shop? Sure I do. Then you're gonna fight again. Oh, no, I, I can't fight anymore, no. Why not? Well, the way Mr. Mooney raved about you, you must be terrific. Oh, I, I used to be, uh, but I'm past my prime, and I haven't been in training for years. So you'll start training again. All you need is one fight, and you'll have your $3,000. Are you kidding? To get $3,000 in one fight, you gotta fight somebody with a big name. Like Sandy Koufax? <laughs> Sandy Koufax isn't a boxer. No? I heard Mr. Mooney say that nobody can hit him. <laughs> well, all right, who is a big name? Well, there's a kid that packs him in by the name of uh, Sonny Shaw. Well, then, Sonny Shaw better watch out. For what? For us. For us? We are going to fight Sonny Shaw. <laughs> that they let dames around here during training. And Nick, that ain't no dame. That's Sonny's tomato. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's different. Yeah. Come in. <laughs> I just bet five big ones on Sonny. Don't worry, Nick. Your 5,000 clams is in the bank. To hear you talk, you think the kid with the Manassa Mola. The way well, he ain't exactly Jack Dempsey, but the kid got what it takes. Hey, he's got fast hands. Good wind and a lot of class. You better be right, Louis. <laughs> hey, Louis, what's the red-headed dame doing here? I ain't no dame. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Eddie Rickles' tomato. <laughs> I come to talk to Sonny Shaw. Well, I'm Sonny Shaw's manager, lady. What do you want to talk to him about? Oh, uh, well, uh, Eddie Rickles is going to make a comeback, and it's got to be against Sonny Shaw. That's what I'm here to talk about. <laughs> you mean you would put Eddie Rickles in the same ring with Sonny Shaw? Of course we'd want to guarantee a three big ones. What? That comes to 3,000 oysters. Clam! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what it comes to. Now, nah, look, lady, I couldn't do a thing like that to Eddie. Well, he's all washed up. And he is not washed up. He's still got, got quick hands and light fingers and real class and a lot of wind. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, just let me show you something. Hey, Sonny, come here a minute, will you? Now, I want you should show the lady what great shape you're in. Okay, lady, punch Sonny in the stomach. Are you kidding? I don't go around punching men in public. <laughs> go ahead, he can take it. Okay. <laughs> ah! Oh, oh, oh. Huh? What did I tell you, huh? <laughs> now, if you was to punch Eddie like that, he'd fall apart. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be the one who's punching Eddie. Sonny is. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry, lady. Now, maybe if Eddie trains a few months, I might come take a look at him. Well, they'll sell the flower shop by then. What? I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's training. If, it's, uh, if training is all you're worried about, Eddie's been training all along. I ain't noticed him around the gym. Oh, well, uh, you see, he's been uh, at a private training camp. Oh, you should see him. He's strong enough to beat the Manassa Mauler. 
The Manessa Mullet. That's Dempsey, Jack Dempsey. I know who that is, Jack. Well, maybe I ought to come with you and take a look at Eddie. Oh, no, no, no. I'll bring him down here to see you. When? Uh, about three weeks. <laughs> uh, say, uh, what training camps he at? Lefty Latimer's? No, uh, Killer Carmichael. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Three oh four. <laughs> Three oh five. Is it time to quit yet? No, you can't quit. You gotta do your road work. Uh, uh, <laughs> Three oh six. Lucy, this is my first day in training. Give me a break, please. Take 310 laps around that couch to make a mile. Now get going. Oh, oh. <laughs> 307, the couch gets longer each time around. 308. 309. 310, that's a mile. What was that? Time for your knee bend. Knee bends? No, Come I on. can't. Come I can't, on, Lucy. Eddie. Please, I can't. Eddie, please, we have to do knee bends I now. I can't with knee bends. Now, come on, Eddie. Every day we have to do our knee bends to knee tighten bends. up these muscles, remember? Oh, muscles okay, are hands tight. on your hips. Hands Down on your you hips. go. One. Very slowly, straighten your back. Straighten your back. Hold your head up, Eddie. Two. Three. Down you all the way. Straighten your back, Eddie. Now, come on. You know how to train. Come on. Four and up. And five and up. Eddie, Eddie, listen to me. Now, listen. You have got to work up the 25 knee bends a day. No, I can't. There's no way. Uh, well, what's that? That's the dishwasher. That's our signal for your way in. Get on the seat. <laughs> Here, hold these. Books? Yeah, the scales are off, but it comes out exactly right if you hold the decline and fall of the Roman Empire and Aunt Fanny's cookbook. A hundred and sixty-six pounds. Oh, Eddie, that will never do. No oh. good, no good. Uh, I, I gotta get rid of this spare tire. Spare tire? That's not rubber, that's blubber. <laughs> well, uh... Somebody's at the door. No, no, no. It's the timer on the washing machine. That means you got to jump rope and my laundry is done. Oh, no. No jump rope. Oh, no. Forget it. Eddie, come on. Where's your pep? I got no more pep. It's all poop. Oh. I can't jump. Come on. Sure you can. You just make a game of it. Now watch. I can't. A, my name is Lucy, and I come from Alba Juicy, where I sell onions. Uh, I never learned any... jump to the word. No, sir, I never learned those jumping poems. That's it, I can't. Come on, Eddie, I'll jump with you. I can't, oh, please, Now, you're going to have to get with it, Eddie, or you'll never make it. Please, Lucy. Now, now, get, get in position. I'm in position. I'll jump with you. I can't. Yes, you can, Eddie, yes, you can. Oh. Are you ready? I hope so. January, February, April, May. What your parents say, and you'll be a great big boy someday. Daniel. The bell, the bell, where's the bell? All right, never mind the bell. It's a telephone. You keep jumping. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Mooney. Uh, no, sir. No, sir. I can't come to work tomorrow either. Well, I'm too sick. I have the jumps. I mean, the mouth. <laughs> Mr. Mooney, I'm not allowed to leave my bed. I can't see anybody and I can't go anywhere. Yes, sir. Goodbye, sir. Lucy! Eddie, what are you doing? Look at this. What? This plant has a bad case of root rot. Oh, never mind the root rot. You're in training, Eddie. But, Lucy, if you don't root out the root rot, the whole plant will turn rotten. We'll root out the root rot later. <laughs> Good heavens, Eddie. If you want to ever have your florist shop, you're going to have to forget about flowers. Mm. Now, right now, all you've got to think about is fighting, 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 fighting. You understand? Fighting. Now, listen, I believe in you, Eddie. You're my kind of boy. And this fight with Shaw can mean a lot to you. Your picture in the paper, your name on thousands of posters. Well, maybe one day they'll even name a, a stadium after you. I don't want that stuff anymore. Well, you want your florist shop, don't you? Yeah. Well, okay, then. Put these on. Yeah. Now, you have to keep punching this bag until the dishwasher finishes its drying cycle. <laughs> <laughs> a 
try not to let you down. All right. You know, I can teach you everything I know, but the rest is up to you. <laughs> now get in there and start punching. <laughs> All right, a little harder. <laughs> harder! <laughs> harder! <laughs> well, Eddie, things are looking up. I'm sorry, Lucy. Don't apologize. It's been years since I phoned for a man. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mary Jane. You should see Eddie. And you should see that left jab of his now. Yeah, and he's down to 160 pounds. That's his fighting weight. <laughs> well, he's really been getting the feel of it these last few days. Hey, I gotta hang up now. Eddie's due any minute. And besides, I don't want the phone to be busy if Mr. Mooney should call. Yeah, he thinks I'm too sick to get out of bed and answer it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Come on in, champ. <laughs> Mr. Mooney. Mrs. Carmichael, would you tell me why you have a volleyball hanging in your living room? Oh, well, uh, I, I saw an article in a magazine about pop art, and it was called um, uh, Creative Decorating Hints with Volleyballs. Do you like it? No. I thought you were supposed to be deathly ill. How are you, Mum? Oh, they're swell. I mean, the swelling is well. Uh, I, I found out it, it wasn't the mumps. What was it? It turned out to be root rot. <laughs> the whole room looked like it had root rot. Oh, well, I wasn't expecting company. Well, this isn't a social call. Oh. Now, do you remember that fellow from the florist? Uh, what fellow? Uh, uh, uh Rickles, Rickles. Pickles? Pickles? Not Pickles. Rickles. Rickles. Not, not Pickles. Rickles. No, oh, I Oh, well, uh, I have been trying to reach him everywhere, and he has disappeared. I don't remember him at all. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. Carmichael, this is the front door. Oh, I already bought my Girl Scout cookies, little girl. Go away. <laughs> How did you know that was a Girl Scout? Oh, I can tell by the way they ring the doorbell. <laughs> oh, now, about this Rickles. I... Go on, I'm listening. Uh, well, uh, I want you to call every florist in town. You find, you find out. Oh, all right, I'll buy the cookies. <laughs> Girls. Oh. Hi, Lucy. Oh, boy, good morning. I'm right on time. Hello, Mr. Moody. Boy, do I feel great. I'm ready to work. Know where Rickles was, eh? What's he doing here? I'm letting Eddie work out here, Mr. Mooney. He's going to fight again. Fight? Why should he do a ridiculous thing like that? Because he wants to buy a florist shop, that's why, and a certain cheapskate wouldn't lend him the money. But he doesn't have to borrow any money now. What do you mean? Eddie, my boy, I have good news for you. I have just gotten you a five-year contract to be the head designer for the flower show. Oh, Mr. Mooney! <laughs> Sonny won't last three rounds with me. I'll destroy him. That's what I'll do. Paul, I'll tear him apart. Paul! Eddie, Eddie, listen to me. What Mr. Mooney is offering you will make you famous. Uh, the most famous florist in California. Are you kidding? With these fits, I'm going to be famous all over the world. The cheering crowds. My pics are in the paper. They'll idolize me. The adoring mob. And I owe it all to you, manager. <laughs> Teresa, will you? What about your flower shop? That's for peasants. You never heard of a sports arena named after a florist? <laughs> Eddie, what's happened to you? Something big. You gave it to me, Lucy. You gave me something that every fighter needs. The killer instinct! <laughs> he gave that to me years ago. Boy, I turned a florist into a monster. Well, you better get him to take that job. Oh, what difference does it make to you? I'll tell you what difference it makes to me. My wife was so impressed with the flowers you ordered, she made me promise to hire him for the flower show. What's your wife got to do with the flower show? She's running it! That's what she's got to do with it! All right, all right. You better get him to take that job, or Irma will destroy me! I'll give you a tip, Teddy 
boy. Don't bet your money on Shaw. I'm gonna demolish him. Kill, kill, kill. for good this time. Imagine, I got a glass jaw. Yeah, you're lucky you found out in time. I got a glass jaw. I can't believe a glass jaw. Oh, it's a good thing you got him to change his mind. Eddie, my boy, let me be the first to congratulate you. You will never regret taking this job. Oh, don't thank me. It was Lucy. She's the one that made me change my mind. Uh -huh. Oh, well, all I did was make him listen to reason. <laughs> Reason? You? You never used reason around the office. Why don't you try a little reason on me? Say, did I tell you? You have to show up at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Do you think he's going to... 